Hello everybody, my name is Griffin, talking to you guys from Rishi Outpost, and today I'm going to give you all my in-depth review of Star Wars Episode IX, The Rise of Skywalker. I'll first give my general impressions of the film, which will be spoiler-free, and then I'll delve into spoilers after a warning. So, as some of you might know, if you watched my video from a little while ago before this movie came out, I was not particularly excited for it. I had been really disappointed by the story of The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi, not to mention the teaser trailers for this movie just weren't doing a whole lot for me. I also said I hoped I would be pleasantly surprised by this movie, but that I wasn't particularly optimistic. So was I pleasantly surprised by this movie? Well, kind of. Even though I've seen the film a few times in theaters and I've had a few weeks to talk about and think about this movie, my mind is still all over the place with it. It'll probably take like a year for it to all sink in, similar to how it was for me after first watching The Last Jedi and The Force Awakens. In short though, I honestly thought this was a very entertaining movie, an okay end to this trilogy, and a very poor finale for the Skywalker saga. So yes, I was pleasantly surprised to an extent. If any of you have watched Game of Thrones, I really saw The Last Jedi as having many terrible similarities to the episode called The Bells, and I honestly thought The Rise of Skywalker was going to be Star Wars' The Iron Throne. Luckily, this movie was not that bad. That's all I have for non-spoilers, now I want to go really in-depth into this film. There is a lot to cover here, so I'm going to try to keep this video somewhat organized in my usual criteria for reviewing Star Wars material into the categories of action, plot, characters, lore, and presentation. For the record, all of this analysis is through the lens of this being the finale of the Skywalker Saga, as Lucasfilm has been telling us that it is, and this lens does make my feelings toward this movie more negative. So the presentation or execution aspects of this film are kind of all over the place, though more good than bad. I think it's a visually impressive film. I don't think it had any shots that rival Holdo's sacrifice from The Last Jedi from a visual standpoint, but it was still very good. I think the acting was also good. I think they did the best they could with Leia after Carrie Fisher's passing, although I do think the scenes were clunky. I thought the pacing was really rough in the first half. They go and do stuff on like seven planets in the first hour or something like that. But it gets better as the movie goes on, though it's still pretty rough up until the climax. I felt the same about the score in this movie as I did in The Last Jedi. I thought there were too many reprisals and not enough new themes, though of course it all sounds great anyway. The action in this movie was not great in my opinion. I thought the scene with the TIE fighters chasing the Falcon through light speed at the beginning of the movie was pretty goofy. Rey and Kylo's duel on the wreckage of the Death Star was the only lightsaber duel from this trilogy that I actually enjoyed. I thought the scenes with Finn, Chewbacca, and Poe on the Star Destroyer were pretty cool as well, although I thought Rey and Kylo's fight at the beginning of the movie felt pretty bizarre and weird to me. I think them fighting from thousands of miles away pushed the concept of the dyad in the Force too far for my taste. I wish Kylo Ren had just sensed Rey was on a Star Destroyer and their whole first duel had been in the hangar where that big reveal happens, but more on the dyad and that reveal later. The Battle of Exegol was cool, I guess, although I think they tried to put too many ships into single frames rather than spreading them out and panning the camera like the massive space battles in Revenge of the Sith and Return of the Jedi, so this made the battle feel a bit off-putting and visually cluttered in my, in my eyes. I also think we should have seen more of the battle. It's really massive, but I feel like we don't get enough shots from it, which was a missed opportunity. I also thought the Ray, Ben, and Palpatine fight was super weird and off-putting as well from an action standpoint. Ben fighting the Knights of Ren was kind of cool, I suppose, but there's not a whole lot of real action between him, Ray, and Palpatine. And the action that is there is between subpar and downright bad. Palpatine force pushes Ben into a hole, which is okay, but then he literally dies because he won't stop shooting lightning at Rey, who is reflecting it back at him. In Revenge of the Sith, he does this with Mace Windu to get Anakin to defend him and betray the Jedi, but here he's just doing it because J.J. Abrams and company can't think of a good or interesting way to kill him. That's going to take us to how the characters were handled in this film, starting with my boy Sheev Palpatine. J.J. Abrams caught a case of the infamous Benioff and Weiss syndrome when it comes to Palpatine. In this movie, J.J. is writing this character who he didn't create, and in all honesty, he's not creative enough of a writer to make Palpatine work. 
Palpatine's plans with regards to Rey and Kylo Ren make no sense. First, he wants Kylo to kill Rey. Then he decides he wants Rey alive so that she can kill him and he can transfer his spirit into her. And then he figures out that they are a dyad, which probably would have been nice of his creation, Snoke, to tell him that before, but I digress. And when he figures this out, then he just sucks the power of the dyad into himself and returns to full power and even gets a nice change of clothes because the Force works in mysterious ways, I guess. Anyway, it's clear Palpatine's plan for Kylo and Rey has no consistency, and was just shoehorned into the movie to get the characters where J.J. Abrams wanted them to be. One thing about Palpatine in this movie I will defend, however, was his plan to destroy or force the surrender of every planet in the galaxy via his fleet of planet-killing Star Destroyers. The power to destroy a planet is a power that Palpatine has been obsessed with for a long time, and it makes sense to me that this would be his final plan to return and take over the galaxy. It's very Palpatine, and even though a lot of people may not like that concept, to me it feels very true to the character. Also, Palpatine's return isn't explained at all, which is pretty silly considering we watched him fall down a bottomless pit and then blow up at the end of Return of the Jedi. I think a few lines of dialogue could have given a, a little bit more and made that a little more satisfying. Ray, on the other hand, was actually handled really well in this movie until the final scene. I really haven't been on board with Ray as the main protagonist in this trilogy until this movie. I thought her struggle and conflict was desperately needed and well done. I like that her insane power was addressed in this film with the Force Dyad and her being a Palpatine. Speaking of which, I thought it was great that she was a Palpatine. It really gave her a place in this story and made her relevant in a way that the other two films of the sequel trilogy did not achieve. All that being said, her last scene makes no sense at all. Why does she go back to Tatooine? Why does she bury Luke and Leia's lightsabers? And Rey Skywalker feels totally unearned. She had like one conversation with Luke that was positive. And while she trained with Leia for about a year or so, this still isn't enough for me to buy that she now identifies a Skywalker, that she's part of the family or something like that. Finn's role in this movie was limited. I liked the hints that he was Force-sensitive, as this is one of the few theories that I bought into between the time The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi were out. I hope at some point in the future we get some books or comics where Rey starts to train him and they rebuild the Jedi Order. His scenes in this movie were good, and I loved his charisma and how the whole group of protagonists work together in this film. I wish we could have seen more of that throughout the rest of the trilogy, but I am glad we got to see it here, because they have a really great dynamic. Poe was also handled well in the movie. I think becoming the leader of the Resistance after Leia's death seemed like the natural place for his story to go, and I thought the scenes where he was leading the Resistance, both when he was succeeding and when it looked like he was going to fail, I thought it all was pretty compelling and worked really well. I also think Leia was handled well. I love that they actually made her a Jedi in this one, although I'm still very disappointed that The Force Awakens and the books that came out before The Last Jedi sort of operated under the impression that she never did train to be a Jedi. And for a canon junkie like myself, I think the story group and Lucasfilm in general kind of messed up by not having this planned out. I thought her scenes with Rey were very good, though, and I'm glad she was used in the way she was in the movie, despite the scenes being a little bit clunky. Luke Skywalker is back in this movie, baby, and it's actually Luke Skywalker this time. I loved how he told Rey he was wrong in The Last Jedi for hiding in exile. I thought him catching the lightsaber was a perfect way of kind of redeeming himself from the last movie. And I think that his character, it was he was only in the one scene other than the voice at the end, but I think that the one scene, it does it strikes the perfect balance between fixing Luke and not straight up contradicting what happened in The Last Jedi. Finally, I want to talk about Ben Solo. I thought he was great in this movie, and I think overall he was the best handled new character throughout this trilogy. I think at the beginning and in the middle parts of this movie, he finally comes off as an intimidating villain who really poses a threat to our protagonists, and I love how he tries to deal with Palpatine. Uh, can He can find Rey, he beats her in a duel, and just in general is actually really competent this time around. The scene with him and Han was emotional and powerful, and it combined with Leia getting him to come to his senses was a great way to turn him back to the light. I also thought Lando was handled well in the movie. He wasn't in it too much, but I loved that he and Chewie were the ones on the Falcon who rallied 
the galaxy to aid the resistance after the First Order. What two better people than them to convince the people of the galaxy to do something crazy like that? So the plot of this movie is also all over the place. The movie does a lot of things very quickly. Overall, I was totally on board with stopping Palpatine's return as being the plot of this movie, as The Last Jedi really didn't set up very much for this movie to address. I wish his return had been explained just a little bit more, though. And another piece that I found really frustrating was that Anakin Skywalker plays such a tiny role in this film. He's the one who originally killed Palpatine, and him not playing a key role in stopping his return was a glaring error that really diminishes the events of Return of the Jedi if you look at this nine-movie saga as one big story. I also wish this movie had spent less time on people scavenging for wayfinders and more time on the heroes and villains getting ready for and fighting the final battle. In Return of the Jedi, the Battle of Endor is like two-thirds of the movie, and the final of Exegol should have been given more screen time. Not to mention, the movie makes Wayfinders pointless anyway, since Lando and almost the whole galaxy can get there without one, and so could all of the people who were on the Final Order ships, and all those people who were in the arena with Palpatine. There was like millions or even billions of people who were there. There was no reason to have the Wayfinders be the only way to get there. Other than that, the only little nitpick I have was the time restriction. At some point, they give a throwaway line, and someone says that like Palpatine's going to attack the galaxy in 16 hours, and there's no way the rest of that movie happened in 16 hours. That should not have been there. <laughs> When it comes to the lore, this movie does a lot of things, and some of them I really didn't like and others were really needed. Hearing all the Jedi voices at the at this climax with Rey was emotionally very cool, but it flies in the face of the fact that to this point, Star Wars lore has maintained that only very few individuals maintain their consciousness after death. Not every Jedi ever. I also don't know what to make of Palpatine saying all the Sith are in him, do they all jump their consciousnesses into each other? I, I really don't understand. The problem is, this wasn't done to make sense from a lore perspective, or even really to make sense from a story perspective. It was done to desperately make this movie feel like it was a bigger and more satisfying ending than Return of the Jedi, and it just isn't. This conceptually really rubbed me the wrong way. The Force Dyad was kind of silly to me, but I guess it's not terrible from a lore perspective. It wasn't that interesting conceptually, and it felt like a way to hand wave away all the crazy powerful things Rey does and make the stuff that happens between her and Kylo in The Last Jedi make sense. I'm glad it was added, though, as it does make those puzzling aspects of the previous two movies make more sense within the context of the lore. Exegol being hard to get to, as I already mentioned, was a dumb lore decision considering how many people go there in this movie. Uh, force healing is a touchy subject from a lore perspective. It always has been. It's been a Legends power for a long time, or it was a power in the Legends continuity for a long time. And that power, whenever it's in a story, always puts me on edge, worrying that they're going to make it too overpowered. But I thought that Rey and Kylo, the healing they do in this movie, it works because when Rey heals the snake, the snake wasn't too badly hurt, so that was okay, and Rey and Kylo, I assume, can only heal each other from that bad of wounds and from Rey, who was actually dead. I assume they can only do that because they're the Force Dyad. I assume that a random person couldn't have done that. Like, I would guess Obi-Wan could not have physically been able to heal Qui-Gon from his wound that he got from Maul in The Phantom Menace. Overall, I think this movie adds some things to the lore I really didn't like, but it also added some things to the lore that really made the previous two movies in the trilogy make more sense. So was this movie a satisfying end of the Skywalker saga? For me, that's going to have to be a hard no. I'm sorry. I really wanted this movie to be that, but it just isn't. This trilogy is too disconnected from the first two, and it just doesn't feel like a natural continuation of the saga. The main character isn't even a Skywalker. Anakin Skywalker, who is easily the most important person in the saga, only appears in this movie as a disembodied voice for like two seconds. There just isn't the connective tissue there, and there just is nothing in this movie that makes it a more satisfying ending to the saga than Return of the Jedi. In fact, it's probably a less satisfying ending, as now we don't really know if anyone will ever be able to rebuild the Jedi, or if Palpatine is really dead, two things that Return of the Jedi really had going for for it to make its perfect ending. 
But with that being said, I still found this to be an entertaining movie that didn't really break the lore too much. I don't really see it or the other sequels made by J.J. Abrams and Ryan Johnson as being part of the Skywalker saga at this point. That ended in Return of the Jedi, and I just see this as a story that takes place after those movies and includes some of those characters at later points in their lives. This was my favorite of the sequel trilogy, though, as I found it to be the most interesting and entertaining film of the three from a conceptual and a story perspective, even though I don't love all the choices made, or really, I there's a lot of choices I really didn't like, but that's how it goes. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. This review, honestly, took a lot out of me, and this trilogy is pretty exhausting for me to think about and talk about as a fan right now. We probably won't make any videos related to this trilogy for a while, although we'll certainly be talking about it plenty at some point in the years to come, I'm sure. For now, though, I need a break, and I want to talk about The Mandalorian. I want to talk about books and comics and games. And I want to talk about the original saga, and I want to talk about Clone Wars. I can't wait for that. And that's what I want to do. I'm kind of ready to throw this trilogy under the rug for a little bit. And as always, thank you for watching. Please like and share this video, subscribe to the channel, and may the force be with you always.